Shlomo Hillel, born in Baghdad, Iraq, arrived in pre-state Israel in 1934 at age 11. In 1945, began working in the secret Ayalon Institute Arms Factory of the Haganah, Jewish pre-state defense force. After Israel's establishment, was instrumental in arranging the airlift of the Iraqi Jewish community to Israel. Had served as Israel's police minister and interior minister before he becomes the speaker of the Knesset. Former world chairman of Karanayasod UIA, the passage of the United Nations Partition Resolution in 1947 found Hillel in Beirut. He was then on a secret mission to rescue Jews from Syria and Lebanon. On the eve of the declaration of the resolution of the United Nations, I happened to be in Beirut. I was on a mission on, on behalf of the Mossad Lali Abed, the illegal immigration, and I was responsible for Beirut and for Damascus. The only source of information I could get was the newspapers in, uh, in Lebanon or in Damascus. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to think. I did not even know whether it's going to be in favor or against it. I returned back to my hotel and I lay on the bay, on the bed. Apparently I dropped asleep because the next thing I hear was some shoutings in the street that woke me up. And then on the other side of the road, I saw some local newspapers were in black. So all of a sudden it occurred to me that if they are sad, if they came with black, then something good has happened to us. So this improved my feelings. And I went out and I shaved and went to have a very nice breakfast. And I decided I'm going to join because I had to know and I wanted to know what's going to, what's going to happen. So we were gathered, a fairly big number of youngsters, etc. And we started to shout and to march in the streets near the British Embassy and the French Embassy. And we started to shout, Palestine Biladna, will you hold Kelabna? Palestine is ours and the Jews are our dogs. And we were demonstrating and listening to all kinds of speeches. That was the day I spent. And uh, very impressive, really very impressive. By the end of the day, I started to understand what's actually happening on the radio and, and on the newspapers that appeared in the afternoon. But I was stuck there. I returned back to Palestine only in January 1948.